Okay, so one of our pet peeves, or I can say for myself anyway, my pet peeve of, of uh, fitness industry coaches, trainers, is the inability to show evidence of walking the walk. And I think a good place to start this podcast would maybe to define what walking the walk even means and, and what practicing what you preach means in the fitness industry. You know, things like, do trainers need to be shredded year-round? Do trainers need to be shredded? Uh, you know, what does is, what is walking the walk mean um, for you guys? Uh, Ed, do you want to go? Or? Yeah, I, I guess um, my opinion on it really depends on, on what kind of sector of the fitness industry you're in. I think it applies to all of them. But let's use body composition because obviously that's what we're, we specialize in. I think you have to have taken yourself on, on a journey. Like you can still be on that journey very much so. But I think if, if you're going to specialize or help clients with fat loss, I think you need to have gone through a successful fat loss phase. If you're going to help clients then consolidate after a successful fat loss phase, you need to have done so yourself. If you are going to help clients with long muscle building phases, you need to have built some muscle yourself. I think in all of those, you don't have to have taken it to the extreme in the world. You don't have to be in a, a professional bodybuilder to have done that, but you need to have been in the client's shoes. Um, so yeah, that, and obviously, like I said, there's different sectors. If you're more in the performance side of things, or whatever, it doesn't mean you have to be an Olympic athlete, but you need to have trained for certain performance metrics or whatever it is. You need to have been in those in your client's shoes at some point for sure. I think it's just, uh, it's just uh, gone on. I was gonna say, I 100% agree with that. I think for what you want to be doing with members or clients is you have to have gone through that yourself. You've had to walk that path. And yeah, I think you touched on a really good point there. Ed. It's not, it's yes, you want to you want to have a successful fat loss phase. I think it's important we def would define what that is as well. A successful fat loss phase is not just losing weight for a photo shoot or for a checkpoint and then <clears> just rebounding <throat> or being in this constant yo-yo or you you live off the, the one time you got in semi-decent shape and you just plastered that all over social media, even though it's been like three, four years. And, you know, <laughs> um, which again is, is a pet peeve of us, a pet peeve of ours, because you can easily hide in an online world, to be honest, you know. And I think uh, to, to take people through a journey, um, which is losing the body fat, getting the shape of their life, consolidating, which is, you know, making sure that they come out of that diet phase in a very healthy fashion with good long term habits and behaviors that are going to sustain them for the rest of their life. Um, that, that is a huge thing. And you yourself as a coach have to go through that. And yeah, are you going to go through mistakes? Yeah, we've all done stupid things. <clears throat> we've all learned through horrible diets or doing things horribly, rebounding horribly. So, but the, the point of the matter is you've had to experience all those failures, all those successes for you to get this wealth of experience that you can then not only apply, you're not going to apply the exact thing that you went through to your clients, but you can empathize with them a lot, you know? So experience, uh, I think people poo-poo on experience thinking, oh, it's only your experience doesn't mean anything. I think experience does mean stuff. <laughs> I think it can really help you make better decisions for your clients and for your members. And then you combine that <clears throat> with this, with the science stuff and you're going to be a really, really good coach over the long term. I think it's finding that perfect combination of research and practicality and experience and knowing how to deliver that with the person that you're working with. Yeah, I think it's gold. And I think, you know, my opinion always is that if, if you're in body composition, you should go to the extreme uh, because then you can empathize along every single possible extreme. But I think it also depends, like Ed said, it's like, it depends what the target of your, your audience is. If they've got no ambitions for that, then you don't need to have gone there. For us, we get members who, who want to lose potentially 10 kilos or 20 kilos. We also get members who want to get absolutely shredded. So it's important that we've gone all the way there and more so we can empathize with the entire spectrum. Otherwise, you're just guessing, right? And, and, and you're not really practicing what you preach. And I think every trainer or coach worth their soul is practicing what they preach year round. They always need to be walking the walk. And that doesn't mean they need to be shredded around, but that, needs, that means that whatever phase they're in, whether that's fat loss, muscle building, or for many people, just living a lifestyle solution where you are in good shape year round, I think it's critical. Um, and I remember one time, um, I think it was Paul Check who said, any trainer should be able to deliver a seminar with their top off. Obviously <laughs> and, I, and I think you said, you say tongue in cheek, but I think it makes a very valid point. Right. If, you, if your lifestyle solution is you out of shape, 
I think that that's a lifestyle solution. I think you're not practicing what you preach. I think I think a, I think a trainer or coach needs to be in half decent shape year round, and then they need to be able to pull the plug, pull the pin on those extremes whenever they can. So whether that's going through a really aggressive muscle building phase where they are embracing the fluff, then you may not want to take your top off at seven R. Uh, or <laughs> but, but that should that should be controlled. You know exactly, what I mean? it's that's, controlled. Yeah, it's yeah. controlled. Or you're getting or you you're pushing yourself to the extreme the other way. You know, like we like to do every couple of years. So it's just understanding you know what walking the walk is and just really living and breathing it you can't be a trainer who who doesn't train or a trainer who doesn't really walk around or live an active lifestyle or trainer just eating junk all the time or trainer that smokes or trainer that been you know all these things that you see like oh, a person trainer at my gym who I, every time i walk past them he stinks of cigarettes i just think to myself like yeah. you're there giving health and fitness advice and yet you're smoking on your breaks i think yeah, what I you think- said there is actually a re- really good point around the walking the walk when, when we think of it, the first thing is, right, oh, let's say the photo shoot photos. But really, it's what they're doing the rest of the year that is actually so important. And especially if a trainer is talking about not just photo shoot prep, but they're talking about getting you a lifestyle solution or however they want to word it, helping you stay in shape for life, these kind of things. Because most people in the fitness industry, they enjoy working out. They're probably kind of a little bit sporty to start off with. So going all in for like these short periods, whether it is like a hard diet or something, it's not easy by any means, but it's, it, it shouldn't be t- un- unachievable for most people probably in, who have, have moved towards the fitness industry. So, but what really matters is do, what they're doing the rest of the time when they haven't got that big goal, are they still training, you know, at least you know, the number doesn't exactly matter, but like around, you know, a minimum like three times a week, staying active, still eating well. Cause if it is just like nine months of being overweight, and then they do a hard cut just to get in shape for their yearly photo shoot. Is that a trainer that you really want to work with? Because, you know, is that what you're then potentially going to end up doing? Because if they, they don't have the skills to be able to control their lifestyle year round themselves, you know, I'd be, I'd be suspicious whether they have the skills to then teach anyone else how to do it. Yeah. I think that's the big one, really. That, that really is a yeah. big one. I saw something the other day where someone said, if you want to be a better trainer, why don't you start by dropping 10 kilos? <laughs> <laughs> and I think he, he, the guy said it tongue in cheek, but I just read it and I was like, I get what you're trying to say because most trainers are just out yeah. of shape here around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And, and again, like, I, I don't want us to go down that path as well. I think we have a bit more class than that too. But I think a key point of what Ed just said as well is all that stuff, all those skills, like being able to get in shape or being able to maintain uh, healthy habits year round, that shouldn't be hard that should be on autopilot right that should just be something that you do as part of your identity you know or your values you, you value being a healthy individual you value prioritizing your sleep and recovery and you you know what i mean like all, i think all those things should just not be uh you shouldn't be second guessing that that should just be part of what you do you know what i mean and that way i think you just provide you, you become a really good role model for your clients and for your members you know what i mean and not in an unrelatable way i think there's this big push now where coaches uh they're trying to appear more relatable to to the to the gen pop person you know you know you, you guys know exactly what i mean here it's like oh i'm so relatable to you i can help you yeah, yeah i'm gonna yeah, justify yeah, my help. massive binge eating by just saying how late <laughs> plan with you yeah. yeah oh you had it you, you went on this massive binge oh same here i did on the weekend too what what, what should we do yeah. <laughs> or it's just like oh don't beat yourself up that's just life hun it's raining today yeah. Let's eat donuts like yeah exactly yeah. that stuff exactly. pisses me off like there's this whole there's this whole like i know like quite a few influential thought thought leaders quote unquote in the fitness industry who are going around saying like you know trainers should trainers really shouldn't be in shape here around trainers shouldn't be getting into shape it's just sort of eating yeah you know because it's disordered yeah. eating or because it's not relatable or because no one cares all these sorts of things i can guarantee you because of the fact that we've been in shape and we've gone to the extreme come on serious authority and i think the reason why we can, we specialize in sustainable fitness solutions is because this company is built and and is driven by people who are living sustainable fitness solutions so we can talk about it rather than just sort of theorize or guess how it could work in theory and blame it all on psychology or mindset or you know what, what isn't working it's actually having the tools in all areas on a holistic approach that and it enables us to to deliver the coaching that we do but it's not possible if we were just theorizing on these things you know, one of the reasons why I personally, and I know you guys do it as well, every couple of years you want to get into extreme shape is because it's easy to forget that. You know, you can get in shape once. It's easy to forget the feeling of, of what it's like 
to say no to things or what it's like to control your diet in a certain way and to take yourself way beyond people have gone to because that i in my opinion it commands respect right and and when you command respect from your members they will then more likely follow along the path as well because they know that you're taking a path that's proven and taking a path that works as well you know for example like if i if i got shredded in april and i'm recording this 20 kilos heavier you know you wouldn't wouldn't me me talking about staying in shape wouldn't really go down well would it and so it's just it's just like constantly showing that you can get in shape you can consolidate you can build muscle you can build strength and, and we kind of cover all these areas which just means we've got more to walk, walk about yeah i think and i think a key point there is like just be, and the thing is we don't expect members to do that like you know what i mean we don't expect members to go to the extreme and i think maybe people miscategor this that's the right word characterize us thinking that yeah, yeah. everyone we work with oh well they just get people into bodybuilding condition i don't want that it's like no, no we don't do that to to sh- say that you have to do that it's just that it's a yeah we do it to sort of test ourselves and we understand that just and because just but just because getting shredded to a certain point feels the way it feels for us does not give us the authority to go well i did this i got down to this yeah, percentage yeah. therefore you should you know, what's yeah. wrong with you i'm just as busy as you are my values yeah. are, you know, you know what I mean? So we, we're definitely not going with that approach no. and we'll never say, oh, well, we did it. That therefore you can do it. That's complete bullshit, you know? But again, again, we do it as a way to, to test ourselves and to push ourselves and whatever that means for that person. Um, you know, recently for UAV, that was, you know, getting super shredded. You know, for me at the moment, it's getting my VO2 max as high as I possibly fucking can, you know? <laughs> um, and Ed, it's for Ed running fucking like 10 years, right? So <laughs> of doing, doing a marathon or whatever it is, you know? So I think it's, it's we always, in, in our little community here, we are always chasing something. We're always yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr- striving for mm-hmm. something that is going to take us out of our comfort zone. And I think that is probably the, the main underlying thing that most coaches should be doing you should be taking yourself out of your comfort zone um, yeah like if you're tra- if you're talking about training <laughs> videos and you're talking about training hard you can't be the person who trains with bad technique right it doesn't train hard exactly. it's just it, every exactly. single thing that you talk about has to be backed up by first of all yourself you know, like ed talking about training i listen to him anything he says because i've seen him train he trains like an animal and he trains so, with perfect technique on, on the on the point you said though sometimes i'm getting set for a set, set on leg press i i think to myself I've said all this shit to yeah. clients all week. Yeah, like I told them they're not pushing hard enough. I told them there's wrecks in the tank. Like, are you going to bottle it? Are you just going to be able to talk? Like, yeah. that's some, you know, that's some of the stuff that goes in my head before I go into sex. I'm like, you know, are you, are you going to back this shit up? Um, Honestly, like, yeah. same thing. I've seen things recently, <clears throat> especially on like hack spots and <laughs> anything leg related. I'm like, I know what I've said. It's integrity. <laughs> yeah. It's integrity, yeah. right? It's having integrity of your word. You know, if you're going to say something, you've got to back it up yourself. By the way, just on a side tangent, I don't know if you've seen our beds, but built a pretty decent amount of muscle recently he took he took these um i don't know if you see these new progress picture things oh he was telling me about them i was dreading them yeah, so yeah, yeah, these yeah. progress <laughs> pictures in pro right it's like how to take progress pictures ed, ed did some new pictures i saw yeah, it, i was like damn he's been building some muscle you know <laughs> i was like why am i the one doing this akash is just off the shoot <laughs> i haven't lived shredded year round Why like <laughs> you're you're late you're relatable ed yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, that's what i was going for <laughs> move the relatable look uh, we went into panic mode because uh, i had to get my wife to shave my back the night before Did you? <laughs> went through two razors trying to get it all uh, off i was like these are going online kind of this mess the, the, on, the, the, the funniest thing is because you know looking at ed he looks like complete smooth baby face you would never think that he could grow a beard but man that back <laughs> <laughs> can you grow that a beard back. though can you grow a beard like uh because i've never seen you with facial hair yes i probably haven't I couldn't really very well. Basically, the cheeks are just missing so much. Yeah, it'd be so high, it? yeah. I don't think it'd be more patchy the, around the cheek than yours. So, but now because I don't think I can, I never test it. You know, so I try. And yeah, just, yeah. Just Might be an I interesting look for you. I, just, I would not expect <laughs> Ed to be as, as potentially hairy as he could be. That's that was the only thing. I was like, what? I'm like an That's eel crazy. until I turn around and then you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic yeah so that's that's i think that covers walking the walk right I think we've, we've kind of knocked that one down i think well just one last point i'd say is i know there's some chat within the fitness industry and some people who I, I think have valid opinions on how you look not determining your your knowledge yeah. which i think is, is a very good point but i also haven't heard anyone say that 
who is actively coaching people. I think <clears throat> it separates almost knowledge and application. I'm not saying they don't know how to apply it, but there is a very big difference in the fitness industry and in being an educator, I guess like influencer comes with like a bad, ter- like seems like a bad to like a, a qualified influencer. There's a lot of people out there providing loads of good education and theoretical stuff, whether they're in research themselves or they're like ex coaches or whatever. But they, unless they're actually coaching and not just one mate or one professional bodybuilder, and they're actually got like a full client roster, they're not implementing it on a day to day basis. And I think that does skew, that does change things. You know, like Brad Schoenfield is supposed to be like one of the, the smartest minds in the fitness industry. Like he does walk the walk and train as well. But I think even if he didn't train, he's doing all this this testing in the labs and all of this stuff. It's not coaching That's cool. people. It has nothing. Yeah. You know, I'm whether he's got abs or not has nothing to do with whether that research is good or not. But when you're with clients, most of what we do isn't talking about the X's and O's, it's applying it to real life. Yeah. And that's where before the first time I ever successfully dieted, I was such a worse coach when it came to fat loss because I hadn't been there. I knew enough knowledge on paper, but it's the, you know, being every coach can say calories in, calories out, like that means nothing. Mm-hmm. You need to do it yourself to understand, right? Well, maybe like this is how you can put it in and this is how you can adapt it to work around work or mm. you know those are the things that actually then translate to results you can't well, read this the book. this comes back to the, the biggest frustration we always have right is around adherence and you know one thing we said um i think you remember on that voice note on the five-year anniversary we were talking about how the people a lot of people just quit coaching gen population uh, and, and yeah, they end exactly. up and, and a lot of the fitness influencers that you mentioned you know quote-unquote potentially are qualified all they're really coaching or testing their theories on are robots. Yeah. People that their number one priority in life is fitness. They're, they're by the bodybuilders, they're physique athletes. Like what you can apply on that. Firstly, it's the easiest, they're the easiest people in the world to coach. It requires nothing. Like they're going to do it no matter what. For example, me asking you for help for, for the Marisa photo shoot, not, not difficult. You do all you need to do is give me the instruction. I'm going to go and do it. Like, you know, there's no worry about like, Oh, is he going to fit it around his life? Is he going to apply it? Does he need accountability? He's just going to, I'm just going to go and do it, right? We're the easiest people because we're just a robot. We're effectively in that stage now because we're so far along, right? But when you've got people who are only coaching robots, their advice is just not worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, just, it's just not applicable, yeah, you, right? Like That's you, why it's so you, hard to co- coach general population. Most most of the ex- quote-unquote experts that we, we hear about in industry, again, I gotta keep saying quote-unquote industry leaders is because all they coach is, all they validate their theories on are either lab rats, uh, research experiments, or bodybuilders. And they don't, that doesn't mean anything because we're dealing with someone who's, who's stressed out their minds, who's juggling three different priorities, is struggling to get sleep in, has never done this before. Like, giving them a, a protein target of 157 grams isn't going to be the way to do this. You know, but saying my, to them you need to have 23 yeah. grams of intra-workout carbs and make sure you have 10 <laughs> grams of your BCAs 15 minutes before. It's not going to make any difference. Yeah. It's 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, the, the fact that you, um, yeah, you don't... You, Sorry, you, one more thing. Don't... What they tend to do when it comes to general population <laughs> advice, they'll just say, find something that works for you, train three days a week, just eat a little bit less food, have your protein. They're like general health guidelines that everyone knows, but no one applies. It takes us such a big different skill set. And anyone who has any interest in working at RNT needs to remember that we're not dealing with those people. We're dealing with people who have, you know, have got so many things going on and yet they still transform because yeah. we have applicable coaching advice and applicable coaching systems that you know, when you join our team, you'll learn all these systems, you'll learn these methodologies and you'll be able to help on our ultimate mission of, of seeing the world transform one life, life-changing journey at a time not just training bodybuilders and physique athletes. If that's what you want to do. That's a whole different ball game. But that in itself requires you to have been an extreme in bodybuilding and physique athletes. So it's just a different thing. And one more thing before I let you go, Ivan, is um, I think that the, with the whole thing you said around look, uh, Ed, is an important thing because a lot of people can have really good genetics. And as a result, they'll be poor coaches because they've never had, they've never got, they haven't got any level of empathy. People that naturally stay in shape year round or people that naturally build a lot of muscle or naturally are lean year round, they often struggle to be coaches because they have no empathy of what it's like to stop training and end up skinny fat or having to struggle to build all your muscle or having to struggle to, to, to get in shape in the first place. If you come from a place where you haven't got the best genetics and you know, I'm just going to use my own example, skinny fat, and I was a skinny fat moves in a pot belly type of guy, I can empathize with that, but I've also had to work with all the results I've had. 
And I think the more the person who's coaching has had to work to get there, the better mm-hmm. empathy they can then relay and also the more mistakes they've made to, um, to teach their members or clients on. And I often say the beauty of coming to RMT is you get to go to school on decades of, of mistakes that we've all made. And I think that's yeah. super powerful versus someone who's just sort of picked up a dumbbell and ended up jacked or lifted or benched 100 kilos in their first attempt. You know, you hear all these stories and their coaches, but they struggle to get results because they don't know empathy. They always, they always struggle to get the results. And even um, I'm in the, I'm heavily now in the gymnastics calisthenics world. And I see a lot of people who are ex-gymnasts they try to coach normal people. They have yeah, no idea. No idea. They literally cannot do it. They're like, well, what do you mean? Just do this with your arms, straighten your arm, do this. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just like, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's the, I see it's the exact, well, you know, I can sort of smirk at that now, but it's the exact same thing in this. If you've never struggled, if you've been a genetic freak your whole life and you've just, you've never struggled to, to lose body fat, you've never struggled to gain muscle. Yeah, you, you, you literally look at, you pick your nose and you grow your back. You know what I mean? Like it's, if you've been that yeah. person, how, how are you meant to empathize with yeah people who do not prioritize fitness? Remember, we, we work with people who where fitness is not number one priority and that's completely fine. Can you get a transformation with someone who has fitness and health as priority number four or five? Can you do that? That's yeah. or yeah, can you do it on a cold when you're not on stoke? That, and that's, yeah, yeah. that's pretty much what we do every single, every single day. But if, yeah, if you've got someone who's like us, if you're coaching us and you're going for a before and after, number one, there's barely going to be a before because it's just like, well, you know, you're not going to do anything, but we, you don't have to coach us. We, you just give us the plans and we go do it. That's great. But that's not the, the people that need our help the most. Do you know what I mean? The people that yeah. need our help the most are, you know, people struggling day to day who and have just, no idea about- I think it's just important here. It doesn't mean that class. you need to give them therapy or coaching or like- or like no, it's yeah. that level it's more just having the applicable strategies to be like all right cool that didn't work try this it's that it's yeah. that approach but you never know exactly. how to try things if all you do is live and breathe fitness and macros and you eat exactly. 367 grams of carbs every day <laughs> not 66 yeah not 67 well, but this no, kind of, exactly go on i was gonna say it's exactly right and it, it's it's knowing how to empathize and that's what we mean by empathy here we empathy is not just being like oh it's okay um it's okay you got tomorrow this and that that's not empathy that's and that's playing the victim that's and you're not actually helping someone there you're taking the easy way out that's the easy way out of being like no no it's okay pat on the back try harder tomorrow no no, no. that's okay let's accept the the mistakes that happen but now can we learn from that and you as a coach should be able to empathize but also get the empathy comes down to you understanding how they feel but then giving them the strategy on what they can do moving forward not just being like oh no that's fine it's like yeah, yeah okay that could work at in some situations but a good coach will empathize but then also give the solution to how they can continue moving forward or try different strategies you know what i mean so i think there's a big difference there too you either have the people who are all strategy and who have no solution once a problem arises or you've got the the other end it's okay health at every size let's you know what don't even worry about losing weight who cares you know you might die in 10 years but don't worry about it just live your life you know so yeah, I think you have to find that really good middle ground and get people who do not do not prioritize health and fitness to make that huge transformation, which is what we specialize in. This kind of comes back to um, the way you come up with these this empathy and the way you come up with this, the, the strategies that actually work is being obsessed with learning everything there is to do with transformation or whatever field that you want to specialize in. So if we take ours, you know, we, we specialize in overall transformation, right? So we need to be all in, in learning about training, nutrition, mindset, and lifestyle. And I mean, all four of those areas covered and being obsessed with learning about it. You know, we've all spent those years and years and years of paralysis by analysis, spending thousands on coaches, seminars, mentorships, and just having a complete obsession with learning how to, how to get results and how to uh, apply this in the real world. And I think nowadays it's, it's very easy to just sort of read a couple of Instagram posts and read a couple of tweets and think you, you know what you need to know. Uh, or you just go through a diet or something that you know, you know what you need to know. But the best trainers are the ones who don't get, can't get enough of this topic and they're always trying to crack the code. You know, how many times have we said we're still we're going to be sitting there when we're 85 years old still trying to crack adherence and uh, how we can get everyone adherent or what, you know, whatever the, the solution, the problem is. 
it's so easy to spot who's like who's fronting on this and who's actually in it for the long haul because i think learning and the obsession with learning is probably the biggest disqualifier an obsession yeah. is is the right word there yeah, yeah like you have to be weird at least for a part of your as you're coming up like you need to just spit you know like just be reading stuff listening to stuff like like you said like paying money to attend things like you know i've I had to one said like you know you've got those educational member sites. I had like three of them on the go at one point, and I was I'd literally watched every video on all three of them, and every a new one came on. It was like I was just like, that's that's thousands of hours of stuff, and it'd be like say I was PT and I'd have an hour between clients. I'd be sitting there with my headphones on or like looking at that when there's other people you know that are going out for a coffee or you know just pissing around or whatever. Like you you have to be a bit weird in that kind of spec, but. You just want to just keep learning because you've just got this thirst. And I think you need that in, innate thing inside of you to to get the, the knowledge you need to be to be up at the top. Because I think now, like you said, Akash, people who just follow a, a few people on Instagram suddenly think, oh, I'm doing CPD. It's like, that's not CPD. You're just flicking for Instagram and watching like a 30-second yeah. thing. And there's um, Joey Bennett, the hypertrophy coach, said something that just rings so true. And I think I can relate to a lot is when he got asked... Um, how he gained his knowledge or like all this stuff and he basically just said i've just immersed myself in this stuff for so long i just kept turning up whether it's like for work in the gym going to seminars etc that i'm not that smart but the fact i just took i've just been there for so long and turned up so many times by just the nature of being there so much some stuff just had to have sunk in and stuck you know like there's probably geniuses who would have taken 100 percent of all the knowledge even if you just take in 30 percent of it now, it's not to say just have like a podcast going on while you're sleeping and don't take any, like be active with your learning, but you just need to put miles on the clock. If you train people 40 hours a week for a year, you're just going to have been in so many different situations. When someone says, oh, my knee hurts here or, or I can't hit depth here or wh whatever it is, you've just dealt with so many things. Your toolbox is just so massive just because you just put in so many hours. Um, and when he said that, I was like, you know, that's, that's definitely how I feel. I just done so many things i've put myself in so many situations that even if i'm the dumbest person alive like i've got to accumulate a certain amount of knowledge from just being there all the, so many times you've got to be willing to like go out of your comfort zone in terms of like location as well mm. you know people are like oh yeah i'll wait for that seminar to come here or well, nowadays it's probably like oh i just go online you know before we used to like travel to different i don't know i'm sure you guys are the same you're traveling to different cities learning from different people paying for consults paying for one-to-one -one phone calls uh, I remember one time, like there was a there was a Charles Poliquin seminar in London. I was at university in Birmingham, and that day it snowed the whole thing. Like there was no roads or anything. And uh, I remember one of our friends like, "Are you still going to go?" So I like it was in, it was in London, and I was like, "There's no trains in London." So I took the train to, to the train to London was working, but no, none of the underground was working. So I walked like an hour and a half from from there to the seminar venue, and I got back like super late. But I was just like, "I I want to go there because." I want to go and learn what he's going to talk about. Whereas now it just wouldn't, it's just such a rare thing for, for, for us to find, which is why finding good quality coaches who obsess with learning is so difficult because now it's like, oh yeah, I've gone through my own transmission. I've seen a few Instagram posts. I know what I'm doing. Mm. On that story, just, I remember I was, when I was doing in-person PT, one of my clients, there was a seminar on in Queensland and I live in Perth. So it's like a four, five hour uh, plane ride across the country. Anyway, his parents lived in the same similar city. And so we did like, we did like an exchange of what, what if I, you know, could you organize potentially me staying with you? Because his folks were like really, I don't know, very welcoming, had a massive house. And they were like, yeah, yeah come stay with us. You look after our son in PT. So, you know, when you're at the seminar here, like we'll look after your accommodation and we'll take you to and from the venue. And I was like, okay, that's, that's really cool. You know, and I had that but again again like yeah. at the time as a pt like you're only making ends meet all like all my funds would go to education to learning to to wanting to be better and this is an expensive course like you know back then i think a lot of these people also used to rip, rip you off a little bit you know three three to five k for like a couple of days but you pay it because you yeah. you like you find a lot of value in it and yeah. it's like cool i'm gonna be in the hole for the next four months but who knows hopefully i could um, i mean hopefully i, I remember, could change i remember for my 20 20th birthday university my, my flatmates were like what would you like i was like i really want a one hour consult with this trainer he was like the most expensive trainer in the uk i was like, i really want a one hour consult with this trainer 
they're like, okay, cool. So then all my flatmates and a couple other friends like pulled money together. It was like 250 quid for, for the hour. So amazing. And then they got, that was my gift. And then, you know, I traveled under, and then the following year, I also the same thing with a different, with a different person. And uh, <laughs> it's just, that, that's what I wanted to put all my money towards. Right. And it's just like, that's, that was the only thing I cared about is like, how do I, if initially yeah, it was like, it was... how do I crack the, co- the, the questions I had about for my own body? But then it was like, how do I crack it for, for other people as well? exactly exactly it was that curiosity right it's that curiosity to transform yourself and then and yeah dealing with people different people if you if you don't have an inkling to solve a problem that a client has brought up with you outside of work hours you don't care this is not yeah. this is a hobby for you this is not a job for you i remember if if when i was yeah ed's example you know someone's knee was hurting this and that I would, I would, you know, try, you obviously try to correct it on the spot, but you'd go out in your own time and you'd be like, okay, why, what could cause someone's knee to hurt doing this yeah. exercise? You know, yeah. and, and you know, your, your, again, you may have been practicing out of scope sometimes potentially, but the, the point of the matter was you were, you were trying to learn and you were trying to educate yourself, um, which I think is, is, is key. You know, I'd rather someone be a little bit, maybe, I think if someone who has good intentions is trying to help someone, I think, can be better than someone who just doesn't give a shit, you know? Like, I think that's, even though the, the person initially may not understand things, he, that individual is still on the right path to want to be better. He wants to be a better coach. He wants to give good information, you know? And I sometimes think a lot of the people that spread misinformation, I honestly give them the benefit of the doubt. And I think they are just doing the best that they can with the knowledge that they have you know, and maybe they don't understand research. Maybe they don't understand that their anecdotal experience means nothing, but maybe they are still coming from a good place. They are just trying to help. Um, only, I think there's only a few in the industry who just do it to, you know, rip people off, but. Don't, don't yeah, shoot down know. my, don't shoot, shoot down my anecdotal evidence. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, I've got to love place. a good anecdotal. Uh, anecdotal. I know you do. I know you do, <laughs> but you come from a really good place. You know what I mean? You come from a place of wanting to help. You know, and yeah. I think that's another key key factor as well. Watch I also think there's a lot of stuff you can't prove in research, right? I think it's also no. the, just things that you can you just gain from your own experience. And I think also, by the way, this whole topic of learning is differentiates those who just think it's uh, who's who think it's a part time hobby for the next mm-hmm. year or so mm-hmm. versus a long term career and calling. Like those people who are just obsessed, you know, that they're here. They're here to do this. There's no other reason. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. also where it comes from. Like, do you like the gym? Or do you really want to be the best coach you can be? Because they're two very different things. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, unfortunately, the fitness industry is flooded with people who have the gym as a hobby. They go there three hours a week. They enjoy those three hours. So they try and turn it profession. It's very different. You know, you're not training yourself in that time. You're training other people. You're not training at the time you want to. You're training at the time. You know, this is obviously in person, but kind of similar thing really applies online. Like, it's not all about you and just having fun in the gym. And you know, to be honest, most of those people when, that I've come across, they don't love training. They like going to the gym. I don't know whether they see some friends there. They like the music. They like switching off yeah. in the outside world. <laughs> Their idea of training is very different to what I would consider training is. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But like, you don't love training. You don't love this. You you love just the act of going to the gym, you know. And yeah, like I said, that's nothing wrong with that. But you're not necessarily in a great position to then you know create a career out of it i wouldn't have said this kind of comes back to like caring more about the person's holistic overall result not just the before and after caring about the overall result more than them and, and what that means is like you genuinely care way beyond and you can't really measure this one right this is not something you you can put like oh yeah this person does this is something you feel right it comes back to the one where you have the knee injury that you mentioned ivan you care so much that you're going to go and research all about knee injuries and the, the session after you're probably doing glute medius activations and uh, all these weird band band uh, exercises because you thought oh, that that'd be the solution right so but on, but you're just, testing real, real you're quick. testing exactly and on that i think it also comes back down to because you know when we were injured how much did we hate being injured oh you know what i mean but how much does that put a downer on our moods you know yeah. so if we know a that a, yeah so if we know that one of our clients is injured we want to we want to 
make them feel better because we know how much it sucks. You know, we, we hate it, you know? So we, we're always trying to empower, empower our clients to keep, continue to do it when they can, not play victim to, or not, not think it's not catastrophize the whole thing, not make it like it's the end of the world. But that also comes with experience because I've also gone down the other path of trying to be biomechanically like perfect and symmetrical, this and that going down these, you know, the fascial trains and, you know, and people pay top dollar for those stupid courses as well. That's a, yeah, yeah. I, I regret doing all that shit, but yeah. it makes you sound really smart when you can, Oh yeah. Oh, you, oh, you got a shoulder injury. Oh, you probably, cause your toe, your toe and your right <laughs> foot is like, you know, you can't, you can't flex it enough. And, you know, and it's causing this upstream thing, this and that, and it, you can create like a really comprehensive story. But again, if I never, if I didn't go through all that, yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to then maybe if I, if I went down the dark path, I could again, yeah, start selling chiropractic treatments, this and that, and be like, yeah, you got to come see me for like two years until you're okay to overhead press again, you know, but it, it, it took me going through all that to be like, actually, hold on. No, there's a lot more that you can do if you are injured or, you know, this doesn't mean that, but we know, we, again, it, it, this goes back to empathizing and feeling that being injured or being hurt or being fooled by a dietary approach. You know, I get triggered immensely when, I, you know, when people come in and they, I don't know, when they, they scared of carbohydrates, you know what I mean? I, I really, that really irks me, you know, because I'm like, oh, I was in the same boat as you. I know exactly what this feels like, you know what I mean? But because we've all been there, we can relate you know yeah. and i think we we feel that we feel what they are feeling you know and we want to eliminate that frustration i don't know is that the same with you guys or am absolutely. i just a bit of a weirdo no absolutely <laughs> i think a lot of this by the way a lot of the reason why we we the, these 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 qualifiers and disqualifiers are needed now is because there's no barrier to entry there's always been a low barrier to entry of personal training right you can get a course on the weekend if you're a personal trainer that was the frustration people used to feel five ten years ago now the frustration is there's literally no barriers to entry. You don't even need to do a weekend course. You just need to be I able to know so. how to set up a, an Instagram account, right? And that's why there's so many. What was that? I reckon that will that will change in the next. Yeah, oh yeah, it'll hundred percent change soon. Like you can't have an industry this impactful on someone's health and fitness and not have any accountability. That there's going to be an yep. accountability regulation that'll come in at some point. And there's just too many cowboys at the moment posting as uh, posing as as online coaches or whatever and it's just a phase right it's the trend it's a wave a couple of years time they'll be doing something else and be selling mortgages or you know in property or whatever, whatever like the, the phase is there crypto like it, it would just be something that's a phase they're in for a quick buck and and that's it the best trainers are the ones who don't have a plan b they don't have a plan b they've been doing this probably for a long long time and they're obsessed with with getting results for for the people that they help that's what it's about there's no there's no like i'll do this for a bit and if it doesn't i might do that there's no there's no yeah. plan b i don't know if you guys have ever had a plan b i can't imagine it right can't imagine ed selling uh you know selling realtor or whatever it's called like selling mortgages <laughs> down the street just as a backup like i don't know why that 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 example is in my head <laughs> but i think that's a big part of it it's like you know the accountability element will probably change soon but that's probably called made it harder and harder for people to to know what what's what's right and what's wrong no definitely and I know when when people do apply and look at you know, look for a lot of CVs, um, the, the main things I'm looking for is people who really really want to be a transformation coach, and you know obviously the first qualifier is that there is some in, interest in fitness. I mean, as soon as there wasn't, they wouldn't even apply. But then as we touched on the beginning, there's so many elements to fitness. Transformation is kind of one one niche within it. Like when I first got into fitness industry, I wanted to go and I went down the strength and conditioning route more that was that was more like my thing over time kind of actually just, just shifted across and you know now I'm so glad I did um and yeah like you know I don't think that you have to have always just been on say one path and you can definitely go between but if I'd seen my CV when I was more interested in S&C and then I've just randomly applied to me that just looks like I'm just trying to just just get off the gym floor or just get a nice life as an online coach because you're not there's no real passion and and um i guess interest in that niche you know like right if i try to um get a job with like one of the world leading yoga studios yeah i've been in the fitness industry for however long but i've got no understanding of that i've got i've shown no passion towards it i'm not walking the walk in that so i think you know make sure that you're also just 
you don't have to go down one really narrow route from day one if, once you become a trainer or once you enter the fitness industry. But I think if you if you want to specialize more and more, you need to start pushing more down towards that. And it's not just, oh, I just I'm, I'm in the fitness industry. I'm just going to try and find a job that pays the best or that yeah. is just the most flexible of my lifestyle or whatever it is. And that's another important thing to remember is that life as an online coach or life working online is not this glamorous, uh, you're, you're, not sipping, you're not sitting on the beach sipping pina coladas. The reality is it's an office job. Like you're sitting on the laptop eight to 10 to 12 hours a day and you're, you're, you're doing work on the laptop. That's it. Like it's, it's, I remember someone said to me a couple of years ago, it'd be great if you um, film a day in the life. I was like, it wouldn't, be that, it wouldn't be that interesting. You see me go to the gym in the morning and then I could just put the camera right next to the laptop and you just watch me on the laptop. That's all you're going to see. There's nothing else. Yeah. Highlight, think, highlight of the day, getting up at 10 o'clock for a poo. Like, that's literally it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the reality, isn't it? And, and uh, yes, there is flexibility. And of course, like, yeah. flexibility is a massive part of it. We all craft our days around it. But at least the RNT, the work, it's, it's hard work. And it's, it's, you know, the culture here is hard work, high performance, you know, we're, we're trying to do something serious here. We're not, we're not here to just do a few hours and then clock off. Everyone here is putting in the work, going over and beyond. And that's what, because we know we're trying to create something special, that requires special work ethic, that requires special mentality. So if you are listening to this and you're thinking, oh yeah, this sounds, this sounds interesting. I'm, you know, I'm interested in working at RNT. Just make sure you're ready for a culture that will demand results and a culture that is very you know, accountability driven and high performance driven. It's not a place where you can just sit and work for two hours a day and then go off to the beach for five hours. That's, yeah, I, I think you can really draw parallels to like the, the RNT journey, like the five phases. Because I think sometimes you'll get people from a, a member's perspective who come in, say, with a fat loss goal, but they want that lifestyle solution right now. They want to be able to eat out four times a week. They want to be able to not track, whatever. And, you know, really briefly, we'd, we'd recommend saving a lot of that stuff, not saying you can't eat out and things, but having the goal of fat loss get that done and then you can work more on that lifestyle solution for, for the long term and i see that a lot actually when i do look at applications from trainers at the moment because and you can you can tell quite a lot who's just looking for that lifestyle solution and who actually just wants to to just work have help as many people as they can become the best coach possible because uh, i think as, as you kind of touched on there's this notion that as an online trainer you've got this this crazy lifestyle where you just flick open the laptop a couple of times a day and then you know it's either on the beach or you're just a professional athlete who just does a few emails every day and that's 100 yeah. percent not the case and you know like i used to train close to the middle of the day i find that's like optimal for me to train as workloads increases and things i'm always on meetings during those times yeah now i've also got family stuff as well but like my all of my athletic endeavors and my health and fitness whatever i build that around work just as someone who works in a yeah. bank would have to do i get to the gym when it opens at 6 30 and i have to get out at 7 30 to then get on with the rest of my life i'm not living this pro bodybuilder lifestyle where i'm you know going in for some cardio at nine and coming back home to having a nap and i'm going back at like two do you know what i mean like you're not doing that and then just on your phone on the car to the gym just like replying to a couple mm -hmm. of whatsapps sending a few voice notes like you're doing yeah. a full-time job as if you were in a bank or whatever you're doing and you know you still got to fit everything else around that. You just got to know what you're after. Like if you if you want if you want that, fine. But it's not R and T. It's not going to go far. You, know, you do that for a few years, you get bored. If you want to build something, if you want to come and build something incredible, then this is the place to be. And you know people see me. Oh yeah, you're in Bali. You must be having an amazing time. The reality is, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just doing a different country. Like, exactly. It's just. I, I'm not. I was there, so I know exactly what he's talking yeah. about. He's, I was, he's still I working all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, it, it, it's just it's just one of those things that people don't see. It's just like, yeah, you get that luck. There is an element of, yeah, that is an advantage. Great. But when you're there, it's not going to be, you're not going to be just sitting on the beach for 10 hours. And you unless, you're, unless it's a genuine holiday. Yeah, and you, and you need that self-discipline to actually yeah. do the work. You know, I, I was really taken back, actually, when um when I said, hey, I'll work from home and whatnot. And people are like, oh, that's, that actually requires a lot of discipline. I couldn't do that. You know, I have to like be in the office to actually do work. It's like, oh, yeah. I don't really, if I was at home, I'd just be too distracted. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't even fathom that. I'm like, well, if you, I don't understand how that works, you know. But Well, the thing is like, I think, I think for, I can see why a lot of uh, employers, employers and companies 
push people to come into the office now. I don't know if you guys saw Elon Musk's um, big, big outburst on working from home. He basically said, he basically forced everyone in, in Tesla to work at the office. He said, if you don't fancy um, actually doing some work, then just go and go and work from home on someone else's dime. And he's basically just saying, like, people who are working from home are just doing absolutely nothing. And it's probably the case in bigger companies where people do take the piss a lot. I know, like, I think it's, it's, it's different here and that people are, are dead serious about it. But often, yeah, sometimes I do wonder, I'm like, wonder what, wonder what they're doing. You know, like, because you've just got so much flexibility. And obviously, there's an element of trust there that, you know, get the work done. And it's not like we need you. It's not like we say, oh, you got to sit at your office from exactly. uh, 8 p.m. till 4 p.m. So the element of trust that you're going to get the work done. But yeah. I think there is an element of, like, a lot of people do find working from home hard because they're going to get distracted. They see the TV there. Yeah, I'll pop off. I'll watch Neighbours at 1 p.m., clock off again. Like, you know, it's, it's that mentality, right? <laughs> I think that really links in, though, to walking the walk. Yeah, 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 that's like, you know, I think when you think of walk, walk, think of abs and biceps, but like, actually, what we talk about so much with members is like having structures in place, like making sure that you've, you've got these systems in place to like achieve your goals. But just the same way it applies to physical stuff, it's going to apply to, to your work as well. Like, I'm not just typing away and then just randomly like, or I'll just grab a random snack. Like, I know what I'm eating when I'm eating across the day. Like, and I've got these meetings set out ahead of time all planned. Like, it's... You know, we've, we've got those structures and that is walking the walk, just applying it to, to professional life as well as, uh, you know, fitness. Absolutely. So, Ed, uh, nice uh, way to finish up. What are you looking for when you're sifting through CVs right now? You've mentioned a few things. What are the key things for anyone looking to apply? What they want to impress you, hardest man to impress, what, what do they need to be doing? <laughs> um, I think... The, 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 the two big things from personality perspective is um, an eagerness to learn. Yeah. So just, just showing that I think you should already should be able to prove that you have put work in to, to attain a certain amount of knowledge. But then also, uh, I guess, linked to that in terms of wanting to learn more, but also like a humbleness and openness to, to, to be critiqued. Not saying it's going to get torn apart, but, you know, when we are, if you, if you do get to the interview or whatever, and we're, we're discussing things, if you don't, you know, if you do get called out on something, not, not in like an aggressive way, but you know that there's a hole in, has been spotted in, a, in your knowledge or whatever, you know, if someone just says, you know what, I wasn't aware of that, or actually that's a very good point, or yeah, actually if I did it again, I'm like, brilliant. I don't care that they've got it wrong. I'm just like, all right, this person's good. When you know they are on the ropes and they are still just talking crap, trying to just cover it up, it's like, look, I've already found the really... hole. There's no point yeah. trying to cover it with leaves now. Like I'm stamping in that hole. Um... We've had some real <laughs> crackers on that, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Remember there was that one phase where we had, I think it was end of 2020, we had a bunch of interviews and every time you put them on the ropes, it was just the cringiest thing to, to watch unravel. Yeah. So I think just, just when I'm never expecting them to perfect, I'm not perfect. So I would never expect anyone to be perfect, but it's just having that openness. And then I think there's more of a practical tip. Make sure you understand why you do everything you do. So I think it's any trainer, I think this is the, the biggest tip I'd ever give anyone. Any nutrition advice you give out, any training advice you give out, any lifestyle advice, anything, just go why. And you should be able to answer that. And so say you look at a program, every minute thing, why have you done that split? Why have you done that exercise order? Why have you done each exercise? Why those sets? Why those reps? Why that tempo? Why that rest period? Why that coaching cue? And it sounds like so like obvious, but the amount of trainers I've talked to, I've said, all right, why have you done 10 to 12 reps? And they can't actually just give you a response. And it doesn't have to be this magical thing. Just, just yeah. give me, there just needs to be a reason. And even if it's wrong, it's like, at least you know that then there's been a thought process put into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everything you do, everything you say to your client, you need to know why. As long as you do that, your interview will probably go pretty smoothly. To be fair. And then when Ivan, Ivan, when you when you think, oh, is this person going to be a good fit or not? You know, you always have a very good sense of that. What, what, what do you look? What do you? What are you sniffing? Yeah, very, very similar to Ed. Like just their response to feedback, or their their just like, well, yeah, their response to being called out. Um, and yeah, just or if if they've got something wrong do they want to go back and correct it? And do they want to learn more about that? You know, and to, were they curious enough to go, you know, well, I'm going to go research and get back to you or things like that. You know, that, that desire to, to want to keep improving 
and and yeah just again wanting wanting to learn wanting to be obsessed with this sort of stuff because transformation i'm sorry but if you want to be really good at this like we are literally dealing with human behavior which is the hardest thing in this world to figure out like i've gone down so many rabbit holes i'm literally going back to university to go down another rabbit hole you know what i mean because of how much i want to learn about this entire thing so Mm. there is to say that you know everything about transformation and, and getting someone in shape is blasphemy that's saying as you said earlier we're going to be working towards that until we're 85 so to answer that question any coach that comes on board should know that there's always room for improvement they should always want to be getting better there's always like even if you know the content a thousand times inside out you want to be better at communicating that content because there's a huge difference between knowing something versus communicating something Mm. so that i think is where coaches should really put a lot of their stock in because again if everyone just it's not just education because if it was just knowing everything we wouldn't have a job you know what i mean or everyone would just be doing what they need to be doing but that's not the case so it's not just about knowing your shit it's about knowing how to communicate your shit in a way that's understandable and relatable my thing my my thing is always is attitude it's culture and most of all it's wanting to build something bigger than themselves I want to be part of a team that is going to build something incredible. You know, R and T isn't isn't an easy place to work for. Uh, easy work at, uh, but if you if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to build something that no one else is building, if you want to build something bigger than yourself, because you know you can have a bigger impact in the world, this is the best place in transformation to be. Hundred percent. On that, I just want to say it is if you do get the job, it's literally one of the most meaningful things you'll ever do in your life, from a occupation perspective. There's nothing more best there's nothing greater than being able to fucking help anyone you know what i mean we have the best gift i think we have more potential than doctors i think we have more potential than anyone that's working in the health industry to actually change someone's life over the long term and that is a huge huge thing that i think many people don't consider so if it isn't this and you're ready to take the next step in building a long-term career in the fitness industry with us at rnt then i will put the hiring application link in the show notes uh, we're always looking for good people. We're always willing to speak to amazing people who, who want to be who want to join the team. So if you are interested, uh, just click the link in the show notes, uh, fill in the application process, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you.